Have any of you wondered if I'm deaf from all of the ASICs and the mining rigs with Delta fans? Yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm pretty deaf right now. Hey guys, so what is up? Red Panda Mining here. How you guys all doing? I hope you're all doing really well and having a really great day. I'm finally playing around with a 5600 XT and yeah, I've never had one yet and I've seen a lot of other people have been testing these cards for mining and apparently they are one of the most efficient cards for mining ETH right now. So I am excited to test one out and specifically I have the MSI a gaming MX edition. I got this off Amazon for a really good price. It was on sale and yeah, I'm excited to get this going as uh, everyone says 5600s are one of the best cards for mining and I saw Bitsby Trippin did a video on the 5600 and I've seen other crypto mining YouTubers as well. They've already tested the cards and it gets amazing power consumption on these. So I am here to try one out myself and uh, maybe I will build a whole rig of this. So let me just quickly unbox this 5600 here. Okay, let's see if I can one-hander it. I've been pretty good at doing that with other stuff in the past. All right, guys, let's check this out. Let's see what we got here. Just some, um, it's probably the manual and a CD driver. Thank you for choosing MSI product. Thank you, MSI. And here is the GPU itself. Okay, so let's just see. Oh man, this is hard to do with one hand. Okay, there we go. Yeah, look at that. Wow, this is actually a bigger card than I thought. I thought this would be a lot smaller because 5600s, a smaller version, I guess, of the 5700. But look at that, my friends. Look at this. This is pretty nice MSI. And uh, wow, it has two 8 pin. That's crazy. I heard these can go down to like 80 or 100 watts or something. Let me take this sticker off. And yeah, that looks good. Okay, wow, I can't believe uh, this thing is pretty massive for a 5600. Okay, well guys, I don't want to waste any time. I want to get this on my test bench right now. And you guys can see I have a Forest Kitten 33 on here right now. And it's actually mining Ethereum at about 49, almost 50 mega hash now. So there has been some better optimizations, a better bitstream on this thing. And just to show you guys the power consumption, which uh, we can do like a comparison later if you guys want. Right now it's mining, yeah, about 50 mega hash. We're getting about 80 watts at the card itself, but the total system is about 123, 124 watts. So yeah, that's pretty good. Just to show you guys, I'm using Space Goat's power meter, which he graciously sent me, and I have it plugged in with a six pin into the FPGA right there. And yeah, it's not powered by the riser, as you guys can see, it's just a placeholder. And what's trippy about it, if you guys are wondering, it's communicating through this USB micro cable. So all it is doing is going into the motherboard here. It's not like a typical using a riser going into the motherboard, it's using a USB cable. But apparently we can use the riser as well. Anyway, this is not about the Forest Kitten, this is about the 5600 XT. So I'm gonna shut this thing down and put this card in and we're gonna see what the stock power consumption is first with this 5600 XT. So I'll be right back. Okay, the 5600 XT is in. It's already mining. I have it mining on stock clocks at the moment just, just to see what it can do. And right off the bat, it's getting about 38.2 mega hash using about 109 watts in the software. I'm using Phoenix Miner and I have the Dash H Stats 2 in the batch file so that we can see all these different statistics, uh, the memory temperature, junction temperature. So stock, the memory temperature looks like it's about 82 degrees Celsius, which is a bit high, but I think that's the best we can do. I do have the fan speed set in the AMD software here at about 82% fan speed, but everything else I have stock. We will try some custom numbers here in a second. Oh yeah, so I want to show you guys at the wall, we are getting for the whole system total is about 181, 183 watts. It looks like it's averaging, yeah, 180 watts at the wall for the total system. So that includes the motherboard and the GPU and just everything that's running right now. 180 watts, but in the software it says we're using about 107 watts. So I'm gonna assume, minus the motherboard and maybe the efficiency from the power supply, we are using about 120, maybe 130 watts for the 5600 XT at stock 
clocks. Okay, so the rest of the system will be about 50 watts or so. So yeah, pretty good for just running stock. Haven't changed any numbers or anything. So that's what I want to do now. I don't know some good overclocks or undervolts for this thing yet. So let me play around with this for a second. We'll see if we can get some better efficiency and more mega hash. So give me one sec. Okay, so we've dropped about 40 watts or so and now we are getting 40 mega hash. So we've gained about two or three mega hash uh, from running stock, but we've definitely dropped down the power consumption. Uh, in the software it says now we're getting about 81 watts in the software. And just to show you guys what I did, I'm using just the AMD software on Windows and uh, I'm doing the uh, advanced control under the GPU tuning. Uh, so I have that enabled and then I'm able to change these numbers here. So I have it down to about 1101 core and 800 millivolts. So I tried to go lower than 800, but it would not let me. So I believe the millivolts are locked. And then I did the VRAM tuning. I went up to 1840 uh, memory here. Okay, so yeah, not too shabby. Pretty good, pretty efficient. This 5600 XT is really good. Now I know that there is possibly a BIOS mod option for this thing. So I will do that in another video. I'm actually wanting to try this card in HiveOS. And there's another tool that I want to try before I do HiveOS and that's called More Power Tools. I just want to see if that could maybe, you know, let me go lower than 800 millivolts. So give me one sec. I'm going to play around with that. Okay, <laughs> with more power tool, we're able to knock off another, I don't know, five or seven watts, but the mega hash has gone up just a little bit, maybe like 0.3 or 0.2 mega hash. Uh, but just to show you guys with more power tool, we are able to bring down the voltage. Okay, so looking at this uh, in AMD, the AMD software, we're able to now go under 800 millivolts. So we're set at 730 right now. In the software, we are showing about 78 watts. And uh, I just showed you guys the power consumption at the wall. But in more power tool, so for some people that don't know how to use this software, you have to load the original BIOS. Make sure you use AMD VB Flash, the one on Igor's lab, the version 3.04. Uh, take out the original BIOS and then go into more power tool, which you can download from Igor's Labs website here. And yeah, free to download. And you go back to more power tool here, load the original BIOS, go to power and voltage and do this at your own risk. But initially this was set at 800 for me. Okay, so I just changed it to 700 and that's all I changed. And then we had to click on write SPPT and then restart the computer and it should save and then you'll be able to change the core voltage here down to 700 if we want to. I actually haven't tried 700 yet, but I want to now change the memory clock. So now we're gonna have to do this in more power tool as well. So we have it set at 930. This is just the stock here. So that equates to like 930 times two will equal 1860. But now if we want to go higher than 930 or 1860, we'll have to do this up at, uh, let's just say uh, 900 or I, we can even put a thousand here. I don't think we can go up that high to uh, 2000 megahertz, but hey, we can try. We can try. So you know what? We're going to try right now. Let me uh, stop this miner and uh, now I can write the file here successfully added. And now we just have to restart the machine. Okay, so I'll be back and we'll see what kind of numbers we can get at 2000. Be right back. Okay, so I made some headway. Well, not really. I dropped it down to about 130 watts now for the total system. And uh, we've kept the same mega hash number, which is about 40.5 mega hash. Uh, which I just started looks like I just found one share, but the memory I was not able to do 2000 obviously and even though I did more power tool at over 2000 there it still I could not go over 1860 like it was locked even though I was able to move it now past or all the way up to 2000 it would just not uh, save it there so 1860 was the highest point I could go maybe that was a limitation of Windows or the AMD software I don't know but I was able to go down to about about 709 on the core voltage. So yeah, it looks like it seems to be okay there at about, uh, looks like 76 watts in the software. So that's pretty good. That's actually really good. I mean, wow, this is, uh, 
a, like a sub 250 maybe less than that depending on where you can buy this card in Canada these go for like 350 to 400 dollars so yeah pretty expensive cards but I mean really efficient these are really good numbers in my opinion 76 watts now in the software 40.5 mega hash at the system we are getting 130 watts so that's pretty good I wonder I wonder if we can go lower uh, then 700 on the core voltage. So let me try that real quick. Okay, we've lowered the power consumption a little bit more because we have now used more power tool. I have dropped it down to, well, I'm able to go down to 600 millivolts if we want, but I don't think that's gonna happen. But in the AMD software, we are now at the voltage of 680, which is insane. And it's showing 74 watts in the software about the same mega hash here 40.5 at these clocks so look at that that's crazy okay i'm gonna quickly go down to 670 so we're gonna keep going down until this thing crashes give me one sec okay dropped it down to 660 on the voltage and look at that still the same mega hash here of 40.5 and it died <laughs> It doesn't like 660. Yeah, I, I don't think we can go any lower than 680. We're showing about 72 watts in the software, uh, but it looks like it definitely crashed now. So yeah, I don't recommend, I, I don't think anyone would be able to run at these low voltages anyway. And we are pretty much at the low end on the core that we're testing on this 5600. So I mean, just crazy. I, I'm pretty happy to just to, just to leave it at like 680 or even 700 millivolts mining at uh, 40.5 mega hash. Like that's incredibly efficient. And man, I'm really excited to maybe try out a whole rig of these. And uh, yeah, so anyways, guys, I think that's it. Let me know if you guys want me to make a dedicated video for more power tool. I just realized that I don't think I have ever done a dedicated video for more power tool. I don't think we need to really use this as you know the Navi cards are pretty efficient anyways. You can run them at the proper voltage without trying to go lower. I mean you can if you want but I don't know some people don't recommend it and I, I honestly I use Linux anyway for most of my Navi cards. Just for Windows we're just doing this test because in Windows we don't have to use more power tool on like Hive OS and all that stuff they they just automatically you're able to go lower than 800 millivolts if we want to so anyways guys I think that's it and huh, this is a pretty good GPU now do I think that this is comparable to like the 5700 if we're comparing like the cost or the efficiency of the 5600 XT and yeah no depending on what price you can get these 5600 XT's at they're they're amazing Mind you, they're only six gigabytes of VRAM, which some people have reservations about that, but hey, realistically, with six gigabyte cards, you're able to mine on Ethereum uh, or Ethereum Classic. Actually, they might be going to uh, SHA-3 in the next year. And then with Ethereum, they may be going to POS in the next two to three years, who knows, right? But with six gigabyte cards, you'll be able to mine Ethereum for a good another three to four years anyway. So yeah, I mean, these, these are a good buy, definitely. And I mean, if you're trying to go for density, then maybe I would go for the 57 100 XTs but again for the price and this kind of efficiency off a 5600 is quite amazing so guys let me know what you think and I will have another video doing a BIOS mod on this so I do have a BIOS mod ready from one of my mods and we're gonna get this going on another video and we'll see if we can get uh, maybe 42 to 44 mega hash at about 80 watts or lower okay so I'll definitely attempt that in another video and let me know what you guys think about the mega hash and efficiency on this card. I would love to know your guys' numbers down below on, you know, what kind of settings, what kind of core voltage, uh, what kind of, you know, millivolts that you're using on your 5600 as well as the uh, the memory as well. So are you guys stuck at 1860 like I was in Windows or are you able to maybe go up to like 1900 or something? In Hive OS, they cut that number in half. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one and peace out.